Hello everyone, today we are returning to the Land Down Under for our Urban Legends series. Australia isn't just scary because of all the scary animals and spiders that could kill you, it's also got a lot of paranormal, supernatural and just plain creepy happenings going on there. Let's take a look at some of the very best now. My name is Danny Burke, this is the Top 10 Scary Australian Urban Legends Part 2. Starting off at number 10 now we have A Devil Among Us. This is a very famous story coming from Sydney and one that many locals know about even if they wish they didn't. On June 9th 1979 the Godson family were waiting at the circular quay for a ferry to take them out to Sydney's Luna Park. Out of nowhere, they were approached by a satanic looking figure wearing a loincloth, mask and horned headdress. This being posed for a photo with six year old Damien of the family. Tragically, it will be the last picture ever of the boy. Later that night, while they were at Luna Park, a fire broke out on the ghost train ride, killing the entire Godson family. Now, During the investigation, police found this picture and wanted to ask the horned man some questions. However, nobody knew who he was or where to find him and he was never seen again. This left room for a legend to grow, that the devil himself was walking on the streets of Sydney that day, bringing death to whoever he touches and always dressed in costumes so that his horns don't look out of place. Next up at number 9 now we have Bodies in the Bridge. Sydney Harbour Bridge was completed in 1932 but it didn't come without a price it seems. Records show that 16 people died during its construction but there were also 3 that were supposedly covered up. Legend says that those 3 workers fell fell from the bridge and their disappearance wasn't even noticed because they were temporary workers on the site. Their bodies fell into the pylons of the bridge. The bosses deemed the bodies too difficult to retrieve and so they continued to build a bridge around their bodies. This urban legend has persisted in Sydney in the decades since with many people swearing that it's true. They say it's the reason the bridge is actually haunted and also that they try to not cross the bridge for fear of the workers spirits rising up and taking their revenge on the living. Moving on to number 8 now we have the Crown Casino Morgue. This one is really strange. The Crown Casino is one of the most famous ones in Melbourne. Looking at pictures you would think it was just a luxurious party hub with no creepy stories attached to it. Me too, that's what I thought, but you are wrong. You see for many years now people have been convinced that below the casino full of gamblers and partiers there is a morgue for storing human bodies. They say the last stall in every bathroom there is always occupied because it's not actually a bathroom stall. Apparently there are actually exits that lead to secret hallways which lead to a huge morgue underneath the casino. Legend says that the staff use this system to discreetly move suicide victims who have ended their lives due to heavy gambling losses. This grisly system is supposed to stop other gamblers from seeing the bodies and being put off the casino. I personally find casinos quite creepy and depressing places but really an underground morgue? What do you guys think? Maybe people doubting it really is the perfect cover. At number 7 now we have the Westfall UFO. Most countries have their UFO stories. This one might be Australia's most famous. It happened on April 6th 1966, yes that is three sixes. At 11am for about 20 minutes more than 200 students and teachers claim they saw a UFO descend into a grass field known as the Grange. Some students described it as a grey saucer shaped craft with a slight purple hue. It was about twice the size of a family car. Others described it differently and said it was more silvery green in colour. Some even said that as it sped away the craft was chased by five unidentified aircraft which circled the object. In the 50 years since then many of the witnesses have kept in touch and reaffirmed what they all saw with each other despite their own friends and even family not believing them. At the time a local TV station called Channel 9 said they had footage of the incident but when they went to go and find the film canister in the archives it was mysteriously empty. Now witnesses believe there has been a cover up. It's not uncommon for one or two people to see see something and be mistaken, but with 200 people all seeing the same event, this story even has skeptics around the world interested. Moving on to number 6 now we have the Burning Airman. If you head to Canberra in Australia, many locals are familiar with the story of the Burning Airman. Back in 1940, a Lockhead Hudson 2 bomber spiralled out of control and crashed into the forest near Canberra. There were 6 crew members on board. Sadly, none of them survived the crash. That would have been the end of it, but then, a few years later, locals reported seeing strange happenings near the crash site. Many people claim to have seen unearthly lights in the sky. Sometimes they'd also hear the sound of a plane getting closer to the ground but when they went out to go and check there was nothing there. 
Then they saw the burning man. The first sighting of this strange being was by a local teenage girl. One night the girl ran screaming from the forest. She said she was being followed by an airman who was covered in flames. The being followed her to the edge of the forest but for some reason it could walk no further and disappeared off into the night. Since then a number of people have reported seeing the burning man walking towards them in the woods. Does it have evil intentions? Is he simply a lost spirit trying to move on to the afterlife? His scary appearance may mean nobody will ever get close enough to find out. Moving on to number four now, we have Fisher's Ghost. Some say this is actually Australia's most famous ghost story. In June 1842, an ex-convict named Frederick Fisher vanished from his farm in Campbelltown, west of Sydney. It was a mystery. The police could find no trace of him. The house lay empty for a while, and then one day, another ex-convict arrived at the house. His name was George Worrell. He claimed that Fisher had returned to England and had left the farm to him in a letter. Four months later, a friend of Fisher's named John Farley burst into the local hotel in the town and cried out that he had just seen Fisher's ghost sitting by the river. He said that he tried to get closer to the ghost, but his horse reared back and wouldn't go any further. He said the ghost was trying to draw his attention to something near the river. A search party went out there and found Fisher's remains buried in a shallow grave near the edge of the river where the ghost had been pointing. Suspicion turned towards Worrell, who was living in Fisher's house. They arrested him, whereupon he confessed to the murder of Fisher. He was tried and then hanged for his crime. Ever since then, Campbelltown annually celebrates the a festival of Fisher's Ghost, where they remember the tale of a spirit that helped solve its own murder. Moving on to number three now, we have Picton's Ghost Town. This is a town about 80 kilometers southwest of Sydney that has earned quite the reputation for its links with the supernatural. It's home to the famous Red Bank Range Railway Tunnel. It's steeped in history. It was used to store mustard gas tanks during World War II and was even a mushroom farm at one point, but that's not why we are visiting it today. In 1916, a local girl called Emily Bollard was walking through the tunnel late at night when she was hit by a train and killed. Some say it was suicide, others say it was just a tragic accident, but ever since then things haven't been the same. In a century since, locals have reported seeing a white figure floating in the tunnel and she has no face. There's also been reports of lights floating above people's heads, sudden drops in temperature, black shadows darting around, and even ghostly children appearing and laughing. They say Emily is more likely to appear if there is a psychic or clairvoyant around, but she has been known to appear to the average person, especially especially if they visit alone and at night. At number two now, we have the Glowing Cross of Lismore. For this one, we're going way back to 1907, to the town of Lismore in New South Wales. 29-year-old railway worker William Steenson was on duty when he tried to stop a runaway train with his bare hands. He was run over and killed. William was buried in the cemetery and his family erected a crucifix of granite above his grave. That would have been the end of the story, but then, 11 years later, something strange began to happen with the granite cross, it began to glow. One by one, the whole town came to see this. William Steeson's cross had a brilliant white hue coming from every inch of it. They began to call it the ghost of the hill. Over the next 60 years, news of this glowing cross began to spread more across Australia. Reporters, investigators and tourists poured in to see the glowing cross. Some of them said it could be radioactive. Others said it was just a reflection. Nobody was ever going to figure it out though because in 1986, the cross disappeared. Some say it was a theft by robbers who wanted this famous object for themselves. Others thought it was a cover-up to just hide the paranormal. Either way, the cross was replaced with a replica which never glowed at all. That was over 30 years ago, but the legend of the glowing cross is still talked about to this day. And finally, at number one now, we have the Gyra Dam Mystery. On the 8th of December 1999, an unidentified object crashed into the small town of Gyra. It completely flattered an area about 52 by 20 feet across and then plunge into the water. By the time anyone could get to the site, the object had already sunk beneath the mud. Immediately, rumors started spreading. Some said it was a UFO space junk, a meteorite, a NASA craft returning from Mars, frozen sewage, or perhaps just a hoax. Either way, something needed to be done. The object had crashed into the town's water supply, so they cut it off to stop potential contamination. Police divers recovered material from below the mud. Geologists said it was just a meteorite, and none of the wild theories were true that people had come up with. However, those same people were not happy with the official explanation. They point to all the witness reports of a large object and a mysterious 100 
120 foot gouge in the reed beds. They also say the burn marks left in the area are not normally associated with meteorite impacts. To put it simply, they believe there was a cover up of a real UFO crash landing in this little Australian town. And now the stories are all people have to go on. Well guys, I think that was another great trip to the land down under. The Australian outback is a pretty scary place I think as it is, but now that I've heard all these creepy ghost stories as well, I'm wondering if all of Australia should just be avoided. Just kidding. I'd obviously love to go there one day. Thanks for watching guys. Keep your suggestions coming for this Urban Legends series. My name is Danny Burke and I'll see you all in the next one. <laughs>